In this video, I'm going to walk you through step by step on building a program that's going to easily let you beat the world record on this website. And I'll use Selenium, which is a library that's really useful for web automation. So let's get into it. All right, so I imported a bunch of libraries here. It's basically most of them are Selenium, but there's one that's just importing the time library. And basically, I'm, I'm just going to put in the the link to my github in the description below so you can copy and paste all these libraries i'm not going to type these all out in the video because it's going to take a lot of time so yeah throughout the whole video you're going to see me implementing these libraries into the whole program and if you run this and you, it says like the libraries the selenium library isn't installed then i put another link in the description below that's gonna show you what to do to install the selenium library anyways now all i gotta do is just set up the driver which is going to let me interact with the browser so i'm just going to say driver is equal to web driver and pycharm has this autocomplete feature so i could just say a chrome and then do tab and it's automatically going to fill up the whole line for me which is really convenient and what this line of code does is that it basically initializes the web driver instance and it lets us it lets me interact with the Google Chrome browser by installing the Chrome driver manager. And so now I'm gonna tell the driver what website to access. So I'm gonna say driver.get, and I can see that it's already, PyCharm's giving me this, the autocomplete, but I'm just gonna go to the website. I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. This is basically the website that I'm gonna be scraping. And so I'm gonna make the program automatically click on this button over here. So for now, I'm just going to paste in the URL so and copy and then paste. So now I'm just going to run this and see how it looks so far. So it's going to take a while to open up. And once it opens up, I can see that it opened the correct website. So that's looking pretty good, but I don't like how it's the window is super small. It's not, I want it, the window to be all the way, the full screen maximized. So what I'm going to do is there's a command, there's a method that lets you automatically expand out the whole, the website. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say driver, driver dot, uh, maximize window. And so this is just going to, when I run this program, it's going to open up the website and it's, then it's going to maximize the whole window for me. So that's taking up the full screen. So I'm, I'm gonna run that program and then it's gonna take a while to load again. And so it's opening. And now, yeah, you can see that the whole whole browser did the full screen. So I got the website that I want over here, but I still want the program to automatically click on this button. So that's what I'm gonna do next. To do this, I have to take a look at the HTML code and tell Selenium which HTML element I want the program to click on. If I right click on the button over here and click on inspect, then it's going to automatically take me to the HTML code that corresponds with the button. So this is really useful because all I need is the ID because it it uniquely identifies what part of the website I, I want to access in this page. So right now this, it says that the ID is clicker. So I'm going to go back to, I'm just going to copy that, copy that clicker word and then go to PyCharm. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to say that the button element is equal to driver dot find element. And then I'm going to say, by dot id and inside the second argument i'm going to pass in the name of the id which is going to be clicker and so now this this variable corresponds to this button over here on the page so now all i have to do is i have to just click on that button so there's a method for this it's just going to say, you just have to say button element dot click. And that's all you have to do. So if I run that again, and if, it's going to take a while to load. And so opens the page, it's going to maximize it. And then it's going to click on the button once. So it says that I only have one clicks per second, which is pretty bad. It's way below the world record. We could do a lot better than that. So I'm going to do something else now. I'm going to create a while loop. So it's going to be really easy to do. All I have to say is while true. 
and then I'm just gonna paste in this button element dot click inside the loop. And so now this program is gonna click the button an infinite number of times. So the clicks per second that I'm gonna get is gonna be really high. So I'm just gonna run that program. It's gonna take a while to, to load again. And once that page opens, it's gonna expand it and it clicks it 31 clicks per second, which is really, really good. And if I go back to the program, you get an error because it says, we said while true, click on the button. So it's autumn it's keep gonna keep on clicking the button until the program is over. But the problem is that this, this test is only one second long. So after we click on the button for one second long, the button no longer exists. So that's why we're running to an error over, an error over here. It says that the element is not interactable. So the program can't find the button with the clicker ID. And so what we gotta do is we gotta tell the program to only run when only when we only when the test is going the clicks per second test. So what we have to do is we have to use a try and accept statement. So what that's going to look like is it's going to be try, you're going to say try and inside try you're going to you're going to put in the button element dot click. But for accept, you're going to say break. And so basically what this does is that whenever whenever the program can find the element of the button, the clicker ID, then it's going to click on that. But then when it can't find that button, then it's going to break. And so the program's going to stop without without the the error that's going to show up. So this is this is going to be good. If I run this again, then it's going to again it takes a while to load. And so it's going to open the website. Now it's going to click it infinite number of times before the test is over. And now that the test, the clicks per second test is over, I'm going to go back to the PyCharm. And now it looks like there's no errors because now I said break. So it, bro it broke out of the while loop and the program is now over. I'm also going to add the web driver await method right after the website gets opened up. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say web driver wait and I'm going to use the autocomplete feature. And then inside the dot until method, I'm going to say ec dot presence of element element located. And so basically what this whole line of code does is that basically it waits for five seconds to locate the button that we want to click, which is the clicker ID button. And if within those five seconds, if the program can't find that button, then the program's just going to stop. And this is useful because if you have a really slow internet connection and the website's taking a really long time to open, then you might accidentally run into an error because the program can't find the button because the website isn't loading up properly. So this line of code basically avoids that error and it's just going to end the whole program if the if it can't find the button that it wants. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to scrape the clicks per second that the user gets and the clicks per seconds of the world record. And I'm going to compare those two values and based on what those two values are, it's, I'm going to print out a statement. So it's basically just a simple if statement. So to get the user CPS, I'm just going to highlight the number and click on inspect. And that didn't actually get me the right HTML code. I'm just going to do that again, highlight inspect. And now that gives me the the HTML code that I want because it's referring to the the 27 CPS. So all I need from this is just the ID. That's the most important thing. And I can see that the ID is clicks. So I'm gonna go back to PyCharm and I'm just gonna say below the while loop, I'm gonna say user CPS is equal to driver dot find element by dot its ID and ID name is called clicks. And to get the the actual string value of this 27 CPS it's gonna you're gonna have to say dot text to extract that part and now I have to get the world record CPS and so if I go back to the web page okay so the world record number is over here so I'm gonna highlight that click on inspect and so now that's gonna give me the right one 16 cps which is world record and 
It doesn't have the ID name, but it does have the class name, which I can still use for, in Python. So I'm going to go back to PyCharm, and I'm going to say the world record CPS is equal to... I'm just going to use the autocomplete. So it's going to find it's going to find the the element by the class name which is called cps bold and it's going to extract the text value the 16 cps string by this dot text method and so i'm just going to print this out i'm going to print this out over here user cps i'm going to also print out the world record cps so if i run that and it's going to take a while to load and it's going to maximize the whole window and so yeah it basically ran through the whole test if i go back to the code okay so now it prints out the user cps and the world record cps so that's looking pretty good but i'm actually gonna i kind of want to convert this i want to get rid of this cps part in the string because Later in the program, I'm going to be comparing the two numbers. So it's going to be a lot easier if it's if it's the string only contains the number value, nothing else. So to do that, it's pretty easy. Just say dot strip. And for the user CPS, I just want to strip the space and the CPS. So it's going to be, you can say in, in quotes, you're going to say space CPS. And so you do the same thing for the world record CPS. But this one's a little bit different because it has a period at the end. So I'm just going to say it's pretty straightforward. Just say dot strip space CPS period. And so, yeah, that should work now. It should be give me clean, clean numbers. So I'm going to say do run the whole program. And it takes a while to load as usual. And so it's going to run the run the clicks per second test. And so after it clicks the button, then, okay, that's weird. This one didn't actually work. Let me find out why. Okay, so that's weird. This program actually got zero s clicks per second, which is pretty unusual. But the main thing is that it got, it only got me the num the number values. It didn't, it got rid of the unnecessary CPS strings. But an important thing to note is that these numbers they're still strings, but so later when I compare them, I have to do a quick conversion. It's pretty easy to do. I'll show you later, but I'm actually want to, I'm kind of curious right now. I want to run the program again, because usually the program gets, it gets at least like 20 clicks per second. I don't know why that one only got zero. It's fine. Okay. Now, now that's looking normal. It's 27 clicks per second. So I guess that was weird before why only got zero. So now, yeah, it gives me 27 and 16. So that's looking good. And so now I'm just gonna have an, I'm gonna create an if statement. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna compare the two values. So I'm gonna say if the user CPS is greater than the world record CPS. And I have to make sure I have to put int around this because like I said before, this, these two variables are still strings. Even though they print out, it looks like numbers, they're actually strings in Python. So I have to convert the strings into integers so that I can compare them together. And then I'm just going to say print congratulations. I'm just going to do autocomplete for this. Congratulations, your, your CPS was, and it's going to print out the user CPS. And it's, it's beating the world record of, and the word, here you're just going to put in the world record CPS. And I'm going to take care of the else statement. So if the user CPS is less than the world record, which it usually won't because the program is really quick, but there's that one time where it was zero CPS. So I'm just going to say for the else statement, I'm going to say print and I'm going to use the autocomplete. Unfortunately, your CPS of the user CPS did not be the world record of, and then I'm going to put in the world record CPS world record CPS. And so I'm gonna get rid of these print statements. I'm actually gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna use the time library. So I'm gonna say time.sleep and two. And then, so 
this is basically gonna run the program and it's gonna it's gonna for two seconds after two seconds I'm gonna say driver dot quit and so th this means that after two seconds after two seconds the the pro the website is open it's automatically gonna quit the whole driver so the website's gonna close down and so it's just gonna I'll, I'll show you what it looks like so if I run that and the the thing's gonna take a while to load again. If I run that, then it's gonna open the page. It's gonna maximize it, and it's gonna run the clicks per second test, and then it's gonna close after around two seconds. And it prints out the whether or not your clicks per second was greater or less than the world record clicks per second. And it turns out this actually, there's no space in between this for some reason. So that's a pretty easy fix. I'll just put a space over here. And I'm gonna run that again. Let's see what we get this time. Hopefully we beat the world record. So it's gonna maximize the window and you got 25 clicks per second. It's really good. And it's gonna close the driver. And yeah, it says congratulations, your CPS is 25. CPS beating the world record is 16. Okay, also notice this is pretty redundant. So I'm just gonna get rid of this over here because I already say CPS I guess so I'm just gonna run again hopefully for the last time I think this is gonna work so it's gonna run the, the website okay this time it did not beat the world record but that's okay let's see what it says okay so it says because the the clicks per second was seven this time that I got the world record is 16 so it's gonna run the print statement for the else condition so it says unfortunately your CPS is seven did not beat the world record of 16. Okay, so that looks really good now. All right, that's all for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you want to learn another web scraping library in Python, then check out this video over here. It's gonna scrape tennis rankings from a Fox Sports website. So hopefully I see you there and thanks for watching.